Hi, my name is John Pasiga. I'm 15 years old and I live in Annandale, New Jersey. I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, my biggest passion is probably writing music and it helps that I played piano for 11 years and I have a lot of musical background. Hello, I'm John Pasiga. I'm John's dad. I'm Joan Pasiga. I'm John's mom. I'm Jill Pasiga and I'm John's sister. I started writing when I was in eighth grade and the first song I wrote uh, is Keep the Memories Alive and I wrote it for uh, my eighth grade class's graduating song and we sang it at the ceremony. Nowhere. I had no place to go so I, I rode the train <laughs> to Coney Island and then back and then, and then back to Coney Island and then I went downtown, got on Staten Island Ferry and well and then rode that one up until it was light out. It was so cold, I froze my butt off. Hi, my name is Hannah Bonnet. I'm 17 years old and I'm from Stewartsville, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Lori Bonnet and I am Hannah Bonnet's mom. I've been interested in acting for maybe four or five years is when I started doing it. I didn't like it at first, but it grew on me, I guess you could say. Well, I guess I'll just wake up and crawl out of bed. Grab a shirt off the floor, pull it over my head Walk down outside, pull out my cigarettes Take a good hard look and I try and forget all the things Hi, my name is Terry and I'm Michael's mother I'm John Rossi, I'm Michael Rossi's father You didn't bring a pick out or anything? Because you have to sing because I'm not singing because I was the DJ my earliest memory was when he was about six or eight months. He was sitting up and he ho holding a little baby hairbrush and he was singing into it. Funny. I grew up in Hamilton, New Jersey, uh, which is a town over from where I live now, which is in Robbinsville, New Jersey. And. Um, Parents got divorced when I was like four, and uh, I grew up on a uh, cul-de-sac with three houses and a business, and my dad and I knew both of our neighbors. John has very strong faith. He was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes uh, about four and a half years ago when he was 11 and it was a very difficult time for him. It was a very difficult time for all of us. He was very, very sick that day. We were so worried. We didn't know what was wrong with him. We took him to the emergency room, and right away they were able to tell us that he had type 1 diabetes, and my husband and I were shocked. We went to another hospital that could treat um, children with diabetes, so I remember very vividly sitting in the ambulance with my son, going from one hospital to another, just holding his hand and telling him everything was going to be okay. Well, at first he went through a very difficult time. He said, I don't want to do this anymore. And we said, John, you, you have to do this. I said, this is part of your new normal. You get up every day, you brush your teeth, you comb your hair, you have to take your insulin. When we got to the hospital, the doctors told us that he could die. His, his brain could swell, and, but they were going to do everything that they could so that he wouldn't. And we prayed and we fought so hard that night. And he accepted it. And uh, he overcame it. And now it's just part of who he is. You know, it doesn't slow him down one bit. Hannah growing up was always a vivacious child. She was the type of child that when she walked into a room, she kind of lit up the room. My life growing up, it was great. I had, I had a great childhood. Um, it was definitely different growing up where I went to school. I went to a Catholic school. I was born in Westchester, New York, and then I moved to uh, Stewartsville, New Jersey, and I've been here ever since. Very um, particular moment in Hannah's life, which I recognized was very difficult for her, was when she made her first communion in second grade and she was expecting her father to be there and many other fathers were present and Hannah's father was not and that was very difficult for her. 
My parents got divorced when I was six, so things were definitely very different for me after that point. She witnessed her friend's fathers being present for many of the activities that she partook in, and that was very difficult for her. Uh, uh, because I've done performances and I was a cheerleader, so I was, con I was constantly doing things. Uh, I always wanted him there, which was difficult because um, I had a supportive mom who would come to everything, including uh, small town ventures. And uh, I watched all my friends and their dads would show up and my dad wouldn't. So it was, it was difficult. But um, it kind of just makes you stronger. It helps you keep moving forward. It makes you thankful for the people who do show up in your life and who support you and support your dreams. And for that, I'm very thankful. Like freshman year, this kid that I knew, his name was Q. He went to Pakistan for a wedding with his family and him and his little brother were sleeping in a room and overnight one of the generators uh, leaked carbon monoxide and they breathed it in while they were sleeping and they just died in their sleep. I wasn't, you know, extremely close with him, but I, I met him in eighth grade. He was the first person to ever talk to me in, you know, the new school and stuff like that. I was lost in the hallway he just walked up to me he's like hey man like what's what's going on and i'm just like do you know that i'm like a new kid like do you know that you're talking to me right now like and he's like yeah he's like what do you need help with and uh he was always really nice to me and that really impacted me when he died just because i never i never lost somebody that really made an impact on me and um especially someone so close to my age and you know someone that i had a a nice friendship with and that really messed me up freshman year. I think Michael's been through a lot of challenges as a 20, 20 year old that um, a lot of people really haven't, haven't, a lot of kids maybe I know that are 20 years old haven't really been through. Um, divorce of his parents, you know, his dad has another relationship, he has a sister now and um, his mom not being well. Michael is very smart when it comes to doing stupid things like drugs or alcohol. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs because he knows. Having friends pass away because, you know, they got into drugs or, you know, like suicide and stuff like that just because they were really depressed and stuff just really started making me just upset and not really know where, where to go, what direction to go in as far as you know, what, like, what am I gonna do now? Like, all my friends are just kind of dropping like flies and I'm just sitting here just like, I'm gonna lose all my friends before I even, you know, become old enough to have any type of fun with them. I mean, and that kind of really, that really got in my head for a while. It was really hard to accept that. Michael and I have had our ups and downs and rough times and good times too, but Michael's always endured through all that. And I believe that his music is what helps him get through a lot of those tough spots. We've always had music, it's always been a part of my life, it's always been around our house, and I'm thrilled that Michael has that, which is why I support him so much in what he's doing now. He's taking that outlet and making it work for him. And I think uh, if he continues to do that for him and he meets the right people, good things will happen for him. So some people, if they have a problem, and sometimes they just give up, but my brother would never do that. He, if he's in trouble, he always rises up to the challenge. He always figures it out, and he, he never stops fighting. I have a very uh, close relationship with my parents. They're awesome. <laughs> um, and they have been incredibly supportive of me in you know everything that I've done, um, obviously. Uh, maybe they'd like me to go to medical school and become a doctor or something, but I mean, 
this is what I love. This is what I want to do. And, you know, they said to me, you know, John, as long as you're happy, that's what we want for you. John has a lot of long days um, with school. He gets up in the morning at usually 5 a.m. and he's on the bus by 6.20. A lot of times he doesn't get home until after 8 o'clock in the evening. The first thing he does is his homework, but usually every night we hear him playing the piano. And I think that's how he likes to wind down in the evening. He, he loves to play the piano and oftentimes we're all going to bed and it's, it's nice because we actually get to listen to John playing the piano as we're going to sleep. So it's, it's really wonderful. Again, we'll have to see what fate brings. You'll be my thoughts and prayers as you're walking down your stairs for the last time, at least for a little while. So to be signed to uh, a record label would probably be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. I'm working on an album right now of all original music, uh, which I'm hoping to release in the fall. And you know, right now a lot of people do know about my music uh, at school and uh, you know other places. But uh, relative to all the major artists you hear on the radio, uh, not a lot of people do. And you know, I've just been looking for a way to get my music out there and to share it with the world, so that more people can hear it. And uh, if I were signed to a major uh, record label, that would be incredible.